All right, so for the purposes of programming, now that we have all of our stuff tested, we're going to press the uh, environment button. And this will make sure that our programming elements correspond to the Robo interface. Because if you don't, then they will use some weird jankiness. So this really ensures that you can actually use um, the analog inputs. But we'll get to that. So let's talk about programming. Of course, you have your start element, and this starts your program, and your end element, and this is where your program ends. Very important to have these, unless you have a loop. Even then, it's very important to have an end. And of course, you need a start. Then you have your branches. You have a digital branch and an analog branch. So your digital branch is one that accepts a input that can either be on or off. So that could be a switch, uh, or it could be a phototransistor read switch or trail sensor, which we'll get to later if we have time. So you don't have to worry about the interface. You can swap the one zero branches, but those are really for organization. Um, if I swap them, you can see that they just go to the other place. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so just going to leave them as they are. I'm just going to swap them. And then we're going to make sure that the input corresponds to the actual push button you want to recognize. If you have multiple push buttons, that means you want to make sure that you Pick these carefully so that you get the actual push button that you want it to recognize. As for the analog branches, you want to make sure that these. Oh, so that's where I might have gone it wrong. So it looks like the photoresistors go to the AX and AY, uh, whereas voltage goes to A1, A2. Very interesting. So that might be used for something else. But anyway, because we have our photoresistor connected to AX, we're going to select AX, and then we're going to set our condition to 500. If you're unfamiliar with analog values, essentially what they're saying is that if analog values are measured on a continuous level, they're not 0, 1, they're not on, off, they're measured in a range. So I think the range for the photoresistor is 0 to 1000. So depending on how bright the light is, it might, if it's max bright, then it might be 1,000. If it's not bright at all, then it might be 0. Actually, it's the other way around, as you might have saw previously in the video. Um, but if we set it so that the analog value is greater than 500, that means that if it's darker, that means that the condition will proceed, that the uh, branch will let you proceed, I mean. And so we're going to do, if it's greater than 500, proceed. Let's wire this up. Uh, actually, let's do another thing. Let's get two more pairs of lights. Let's wire up one of them. Let's wire up to motor three. And let's take our second light and wire it up to motor four. Then let's place our photo transistor right in front of the photo resistor. So we'll make this the first branch, this one on the right. And we'll put the photoresistor facing away from it so that it doesn't get toggled by it. Then we're going to take our push button and we're going to place it in front of the second light. And then our third light will leave for a loop later. All right, and so getting back to our programming. All right, so next element is a time delay. That's pretty self-explanatory. It just gives you a delay in your program so that you can wait a bit before you start your next command. You can set this to 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds. You can even set it to minutes and hours. You probably won't need hours, but who knows. 10, let's do, let's do 3 seconds. Alright, and, so, and then you have your motor output element. This is self-explanatory. You can control which motor output um, is being toggled. So this could be our motor, our light, or our other lights. Um, and if you pick a light, make sure that you toggle lamp. If you pick, uh, well, 
you won't pick these other ones, but if you pick them, make sure that you pick the corresponding image on the right here. If you pick a motor, click motor. You can control the speed and it's counterclockwise. And you can also control if it's a lamp, if it's on or reverse on, which I don't know what that is, but you can also control its brightness. So we're going to use this to turn on the motor at a speed of eight. All right, the next element is a waiting for input. And this is basically the same thing as a delay. But this way, this, this is not based on time. You actually need to trigger an action for the program to move forward. So you can wait for a on signal, an off signal, an off to on signal, an on to off signal, which is rising or falling, or a toggle, which is 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. And of course, you need to choose the input that you use to trigger the action, and as well as the type of uh, device that you use to trigger the action. In this case, we're using the push button. OK. Next is the pulse counter, which is, I actually really never used this when I was um, in class, but it's very similar to how the um, wait for input works. But instead of just waiting for one input, it waits for um, a number of those inputs. So instead of just pressing the push button once, you have to wait for 10 pushes. Uh, very similar. Uh, and finally, there's a counter loop. Now this is really your while or your for loop. Um, this basically makes it so that your program can loop a certain amount of times. Uh, you can actually just control how many times it loops. Very simple. Let's do six. Uh, actually, let's do three. And the pins here uh, are really important that you put them in the right order. This top left pin goes to the previous part of your program. So wherever your program started, that should come from, that should go to the top left pin. So that's your, that's your input. Then at the bottom and the right side, you have your yes and no pin. So if the loop is fulfilled, then it should go to the bottom. So this is where the rest of your program should proceed. But if, uh, for whatever program you want to loop, it should go through no. And then, and for that program segment that's being looped, it should loop back to the plus one or the top right pin. And so then you'll have a loop created. Lastly, you have text, which you can use as captions. For every pro project you make in RoboPro, it's a very good idea to make sure you have ca captions so that you can give commentary to your work and also just to uh, name your assignment. So. This is Iman's test. All right, so in the next video, we're going to play around with making a sequence of inputs.